The Nobushi in For Honor is an excellent long-ranged harasser that focuses on getting the advantage over her enemies through poke damage and bleeds. You'll need to keep range as the Nobushi, and play smarter. Keep your enemies at bay, and focus on finding ways to force out bleed damage. You'll be frustrating your enemies to death, more or less. Always remember to use your revenge meter. Revenge boosts your damage and health. As a Nobushi, you're going to need to abuse the bonuses whenever possible. Revenge mode makes all your attacks uninterruptible as well, and attacks are auto-parried on activation, which basically makes you something to run away from. The revenge meter will save your life. If anyone gets close to you when you have a full gauge, immediately pop it and step back a few paces. It's a free escape from hyper-aggressive players that close the distance on you. You'll gain more feat resources playing objectives and killing enemies. Playing into your set role will garner you more resources to unlock them. In the first slot is Iron Lungs, unlocked at level 1, where you can still sprint when out of stamina. Speed Revive, unlocked at level 5, allows you to rapidly revive fallen teammates. Nobushi plays out sort of support-like, but not completely. Resurrecting your teammates quickly will be a huge boon for your team. Body Count, unlocked at level 13, means killing soldiers grants you health and stamina. In the second slot is Arrow Strike, unlocked at level 1, which calls an Arrow Strike dealing moderate damage over an area. Smoke Bomb, unlocked at level 7, throws a smoke bomb on the ground that breaks the lock. And Revenge Attacks, unlocked at level 15, means attacks fill the revenge meter. You'll be poking quite a bit with your weapon, and the other choices are somewhat mediocre. For slot number 3, we have Blissful Rest, a level 1 unlock that rapidly brings yourself to full health. Level 9 gets you Longbow, which fires a longbow for moderate damage. Then at level 17, there is Sharpen Blade, wherein attacks inflict low damage over time. Your character has natural bleed combos, but the bleed comes in at the end of each combo. Scoring bleed damage right off the bat is a great tool. For the fourth and final slot, level 1 grants you Stalwart Banner, which means nearby allies continuously regain health. Arrow Storm, unlocked at level 11, brings an aerial attack that deals medium damage in multiple areas. And lastly, you get Fire Trap at level 19, a trap that explodes and creates a fire area of effect. This feat puts out massive damage and applies damage over time. You probably won't be fighting in a single area all the time, so the banner doesn't feel worth it. You'll want to play around your allies in 4v4 Dominion. Again, Nobushi plays out fairly support-like, but by no means is she forced into it. Keep your distance from your enemies and never let yourself be surrounded. Imagine every other player is a wild beast. Poke at it with your blade and force them backward. You'll score plenty of damage by just maintaining your distance. Remember to get plenty of revives whenever possible. Your speed revive will help you farm more feat resources to get a competitive advantage over your opponents. You don't necessarily depend on your feats, but they make you all the more deadly. In 4v4 and 2v2 Brawl, you need to be able to win your 1v1 consistently and quickly. You can always outshine your opponent in a 1v1, however, if you're locked down to a 2v1, pray to God one of them is bad. You will be destroyed if the odds aren't in your favor. If you're in a 2v1, your best bet is to rely on your bleeds. Damage and move, damage and move. Stay the hell away from 4s unless you're grouped with a team. You'll likely be focused down because the Nobushi class is extremely dangerous when left untouched. Nobushi is a favorited character in 1v1 duel due to the mechanics of the class. You can get early damage in with your dashing strike and continue the pressure whenever they try to advance. Disengage and run backwards if you need to. It's fine to reset the fight because you'll have your range back in hand. The Raider in For Honor is an adaptable, more straightforward type of character that focuses on getting the advantage over his enemies through multiple means, mainly stuns and knockdowns. You'll want to close the distance as best you can playing the Raider, and definitely look to play aggressive. Get in close with your Stampede Charge, but don't be so telegraphed. It's very noticeable and easy to dodge. Always remember to use your revenge meter. Revenge boosts your damage and health. As a raider, you're gonna need to abuse the bonuses whenever possible. Revenge mode makes all your attacks uninterruptible as well, and attacks are auto-parried on activation, basically making you something to run away from. 
If you ever wanted to truly capture the essence of a Viking, activate your revenge meter. It isn't recommended to just go all out, but it's up to you. It's perfectly viable for now, though against experienced players, you're just gonna give them more opportunities. You'll gain more feat resources playing objectives and killing enemies. Playing into your set role will garner you more resources to unlock them. First slot, Rush, unlocked at level one, is a trigger to gain movement speed for a short duration. Enemies are bound to run. Chasing them down is tedious, so this feat is your solution. Tireless, unlocked at level five, allows you to lose stamina at a slower rate. Body count, unlocked at level 13, means killing soldiers grants you health and stamina. Slot number two, Marked for Death, your level one unlock, reveals a target's position and lowers their attack and defense. This ability alone will increase team coordination ridiculously. Find a target and focus them down easily. Level seven brings you Inspire, wherein allies deal more damage and soldiers fight faster. Last is Bear Trap, unlocked at level 15, which sets a trap that damages and stops victims in their tracks. The third slot starts off with Second Wind at level 1, which recovers some of your health. Fury, unlocked at level 9, raises sprint speed slightly while your attack and defense are increased greatly. If you've ever wanted to be a monster on the battlefield, here's where you begin. This feat is the best option among the rest. At level 17, you get Battle Cry, which increases ally damage and makes enemy soldiers flee. In the fourth slot, level 1 gets you Fire Flask, wherein you throw a projectile creating a fire effect over an area. Stalwart Banner comes at level 11, granting nearby allies continuously regaining health. Last up is Slippery, unlocked at level 19, which you can activate to block all grab attempts for a while. Oddly enough, grabs don't come as often as you might think, so it's difficult to justify wasting a fourth level slot on this feat. What does a raider do in 4v4 Dominion? Raid in parties. Surround your opponents and hack away. Dealing with multiple enemies in For Honor is near impossible, so be sure to keep your surroundings in mind as the raider. There are so many ways to cheese another player by carrying them to the ledge and throwing them off. Rotate as much as you can between the objectives and help where you're needed. You can insta-give with the environment, but you aren't a solo god. You still need patience every now and again. Bait out attacks and punish. Four brawls and two brawls can get messy, but that's where you shine. Being able to dish out your damage with little resistance makes the raider deadly in these modes. You can get early damage in and continue to harass, or move over to another opponent to disrupt the pace. The Raider is very movement heavy in 1v1 fights. You have plenty of rushing moves you can utilize to close the distance and immediately disable your opponent. Make quick use of your stunning tap and drop in some cheeky damage here and there. The Warlord in For Honor is an aggressive character, which could also be played as a counter attacker. He focuses on getting the advantage over his enemies through multiple unblockable attacks and has an uninterruptible heavy attack called the Head Splitter. His combos are extremely basic, but the opportunities will constantly present themselves. You'll score a few hits here and there. Focus on finding ways to use block and stab. Always remember to use your revenge meter. Revenge boosts your damage and health. As a warlord, you're going to need to abuse the bonuses whenever possible. Revenge mode makes all your attacks uninterruptible as well, and attacks are auto-parried on activation. Basically, you're something to run away from. The Revenge Meter can be another option for you to counter enemy aggression. You'll gain more feat resources playing objectives and killing enemies. Playing into your set role will garner you more resources to unlock the feats. In the first slot, you have Speed Revive, unlocked at level 1, which allows you to rapid revive fallen teammates. Rush, unlocked at level 5, is a trigger to gain movement speed for a short duration. Then there's Deadly, unlocked at level 13, where your attacks deal more damage. Compared to the other feats, this one is a fairly easy choice. For your second slot, you have Bear Trap, unlocked at level one, which sets a trap that damages and stops victims in their tracks. Juggernaut, unlocked at level seven, slows you down, but you gain high damage reduction. And Flesh Wound, unlocked at level 15, gains you moderate damage reduction. This feat is the better option as compared to Juggernaut. You don't wanna set yourself up in a situation where you could possibly forget to even use it. In slot number three, you start with Fury at level one, which raises your sprint slightly and your attack and defense greatly. Tough as Nails, unlocked at level nine, raises max health when unlocked. 
This one is difficult because while gaining better attack and defense is enjoyable, getting beefier in a passive way makes you a mindless killing machine, which could be good in the right player's hands. Level 17 gets you Punch Through, which deals damage on blocked attacks. As for the fourth slot, Regenerate comes to you at level 1, which regenerates health when out of combat. Auto Revive, unlocked at level 11, revives you when dying without the help of another player. So yeah, it's the OP feat. Lastly is Fire Flask, a level 19 feat that throws a projectile, creating a fire effect over an area. 4v4 Dominion is not where the Warlord truly shines, but you're still viable here. You can easily solo cap the objective closer to the enemy spawn and hold it for some time. Play more stable and move around the map less. There's no need for you to be everywhere at once. Make sure to utilize your positioning as many of your attacks have a pushback effect which you can abuse near environmental traps. 4v4 brawls may be a bit too messy for the Warlord. He banks on counters plenty, but fights are usually just a cluster of people spamming attack. 2v2 brawls should play out much cleaner. You can win your 1v1 patiently with shield counter, but keep your teammate in mind. If they're losing, you need to speed things up. You can attempt to get in cheeky early damage with the head splitter leap, and then go straight back into counter attacking. Warlord masters 1v1 duel fights due to the nature of the character. Every enemy attack is an opportunity for you, similar to the Orochi, except you have a stun at your disposal. Get the block, score a hit or two, and repeat. Be sure to check out every other For Honor class guide on the PvP Live YouTube channel. You're watching esports on PvP Live.